Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! And you are listening to James O'Brien on LBC. Um, I want to return to that story about policemen with tattoos later in the programme. There's also some fascinating research about slaughterhouses. I don't know how any of us can ever eat meat again after reading about this sort of stuff. I met an eight-year-old vegetarian at the weekend, and for the first time in a long time, it really made me wonder why it is <laughs> I'm regularly to be found tucking in to a cadaver. Uh, and the badger cull is back, which may well prove to lead us into similar territory. But I want to begin with this story about the French proposal to end UK border checks in Calais. And, and I really want you to help me understand it a little bit better, because from where I'm sitting, I don't understand why the French signed it. <laughs> and, and I don't really see got a great deal of uh, power or ability to prevent them from shaking things up a bit. Uh, just to sort of clarify where I am this morning, I, I'm just imagining if the boot was on the other foot. It's always very helpful to do that if you're trying to get a, uh, well I find anyway, if you're trying to get a grasp on um, issues that you're not directly involved in, uh, imagine what it would be like if you did. And then when it comes to politics, if you're trying to get a grasp on international relations, imagine if the problem that another country is trying to solve was a problem that you had. If we had uh, Dover or Folkestone or wherever it would prove to be, a, a, a camp akin to the so-called jungle in Calais, any politician who came up with the idea of shifting the problem to the other side of the channel would be cheered to the rafters, right? Uh, that's the starting point. I don't know whether you're going to contradict that. I, I, I'm going to try and tell you what I understand this story to be about and where my confusion lies and then between us by 11 o'clock hopefully we'll have a slightly better understanding of it because it, well at first glance I, I got to tell you that the French seem mad to have agreed to what they've agreed to and madder still not to do everything they can in their own interest, not our interest, to do everything they can in order to dismantle it. David Cameron in the run-up to the referendum vote did warn that this might happen, but frankly, given that the treaty signed um, Le Touquet, the Treaty of Le Touquet, was a bilateral treaty signed between France and Britain, it doesn't necessarily follow, does it, that the decision to leave the European Union would lead the French to reconsider a bilateral treaty that was signed independently of any other European Union issues. Anyway, that's my first area of confusion. So, look, look, to begin at the beginning, phone lines are open, by the way. If I've already dropped a clanger, you're welcome to point it out on 0345 6060973. You get, you get to the border at Calais, and usually, with, with a British passport, you get waved through, right, by the French customs guards. Is this right? It's a while since I came back from France by road, so you're going to have to correct me if I'm wrong. You get waved through the first sort of checkpoint, which is manned by French customs officers, because you, they're not that worried about people trying to leave the country, as it were. Then, you come to the second platform, as it were, the second stage, and... That is manned by British customs officers, who are obviously a lot more interested in scrutinising your right to come into Britain. And knowing this, people who are keen to get here to claim asylum obviously can't show their papers at the border, because then they would fall victim to the Dublin Agreement. Good grief. So we've got Le Touquet and we've got Dublin, all right? Are you still with me at the back? So the Le Touquet uh, Treaty is the one that is perhaps under threat. The Dublin Regulation is the one that's not properly enforced. This is the well-trodden path that tells us refugees must register in the first European country they arrive in. I, I think the first safe country, so I, I guess you could argue that Turkey perhaps at the moment doesn't fit in to that category, but there's certainly a hell of a lot of land between most uh, EU borders and the British border. So you get to the second uh, stage, if you like, of customs and that is where you would be turned away and if you're turned away you can't claim asylum have i got this right that is why you have to try and get in under a bus or, or or in someone's boot if you can get in in somebody's boot if you can get to blighty and then stick in your claim you have a much better chance than you do if well you're not gonna have any chance at all if you're trying to get in 
via Dover or, or Calais because they can just say, no, sorry, why, why haven't you applied for asylum here? So quite categorically, the people living in the jungle, this is my second observation, that you are free to criticise or indeed contradict because I'm, I'm flying fairly blind. In fact, I'm amazed, as I often am at the moment, by how an issue that excites such strong opinions appears to admit so little understanding. If I asked you, why did the French sign this treaty in the first place? I don't think you'd be able to answer that, would you? Well, let's find out. Why do you think the French signed this treaty in the first place? 0345 6060 973. You get to the second uh, post, the second customs post, and that is the problem for, from the French point of view. Because the British has a customs barrier. What's the phrase I'm looking for? Border, actually. The British border is effectively extended to Calais, therefore the jungle exists. Is that right? 0345 6060 So, the locals in Calais are furious about this. There's um, action due to take place this week. Shopkeepers, hauliers, business people. I mean, absolute hell. Hell on earth. It is, for the record, considerably worse for the people living in the jungle than it is for the people trying to run businesses in the area. But the people trying to run businesses in the area, they are the ones for whom French politicians are supposed to be acting. So you get, you get this to this point here, and you find yourself wondering why on earth, just in terms of pure objectivity and intelligence, so I, I apologise if that's going to exclude you from this conversation, there's not a great deal I can do about it, if, you, if, you, if you're not interested in thinking about this, why on earth, why on earth would the French not move in the way that Sarkozy and others are describing? I can't for the life of me see, I don't think it, it, it's good for us, I don't want it to happen, but in terms of what happens when you take off your jingoistic spectacles and actually look at the world in the cold light of reality and fact, why the hell would the French not do everything within their power to shift this problem a lot closer to our doorstep than their own? So the French presumably, because it's their territory, it's their sovereign land, have all the power they need just to turn around and say, sorry, we're not letting you have that border here anymore uh, because we, we, don't want the, we don't want to deal with the, with the rejects. We don't want to deal with all the people failing to go across. We want you to deal with it. It's your, it's your problem. This shouldn't be our problem. These people don't want to live in France. They don't want to live in Calais. They want to live in Britain, rightly or wrongly. That's your problem. But then I'm left with the problem or the worry or the question of why... Why would the French sign it in the first place? 0345 6060 973. Hit the numbers now, you will get through. Look, I, I can't suggest to you that this is going to be an uncontroversial conversation, but I do want to stress to you that it is not a, a binary one. This is not a sort of a, a question of, do oh, we need to control our ball. I mean, that debate is over. The, vote, the, the referendum vote has taken place. So regardless of the fact that all those people who voted to punch themselves in the face are now trying to blame it on everybody else, this is a conversation about today, about modern politics. Can you explain to me and everybody else why the French signed this treaty in the first place? It seems so. Did they not realise what would happen? And why would Brexit change the landscape in any way? in order to, because it's a bilateral treaty. So has it just sort of become the case that the French, when we were members of the European Union and poised to remain members, thought, well, look, it's a bit of a bummer for us, but, hey, we're all on the same team. We'll take, we'll take one for the team. And now that we've elected to leave the team, the French are saying, why should we take one for the team anymore? These are pure speculations from me, but they seem to be quite important ones. Here are the numbers now. You will get through. 0345 973 if it was in Britain and British politicians could do anything at all to move it, to dilute it, to reduce it, we'd be screaming at them to do so. If it's in France, how can we possibly query or quibble with French politicians suggesting that this problem is no longer theirs? They seek to wash their hands of it. No? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Christine's in Brentwood. Christine, why did the French sign this treaty in the first place? Well, I have no idea why they signed it, but I know it was signed at the request of the French at yes. the time. And, uh, By I Sarkozy, I think. No I think Sarkozy was the relevant minister. That's right. Yes. yes, it was. And it has nothing to do with Brexit, because when I was in the north of France last December, uh, I was reading on the local newspaper, La Voix du Nord, that um, the local uh, MP, because we had uh, the regional elections last year in France, he had been elected by promising the people in the north of France that he was going to cancel the Le Touquet agreements anyway. Right. 
So that's beside Brexit. Yes, no, I mean, it's it's, it's clearly electorally, um, uh, well, toxic's not the word, is it? Hot. It's a hot topic electorally. Exactly. And that's why now they are doing it again by trying to get more votes for the for the elections next year, the presidential election. But it will work. It has nothing to do... Oh, obviously, well, it worked for the people, from, for the chap who was elected in the north, because he was elected on the ground of saying he was going to get rid of the... But why, why would the French, anyway. why would French politicians not do what they're proposing? I don't, I, I'm truly struggling to see the self-interest from the French. Well, no, they wanted to get rid of the two of the two yes, really But why wouldn't they? Dead. Why wouldn't they? Well, what's the argument against getting rid well, of it? There is no argument against it. Of course, it's a very poli it's a very good uh, political. Uh, so it's going to happen. Uh, I don't think it will happen. I, I don't know if it will happen or not. Well, but you can see why I'm confused. Yeah, but but uh, <laughs> well, I can see why everybody is confused because what my point to, I'm trying to make is it has nothing to do with Brexit because it was. No, I no, I, I completely before. understand that. It's been I mean it's been a live issue since 1983. I, I'm just wondering why. David Cameron warned that this would happen before the referendum, whether there is just something to do with, um, well, teamship. Well, again, it was a again, it was a political thing for him to get uh, people voting against Brexit. Yes, but he, he, uh, in a sense, he's been proved right. The, the only thing I'm wondering is whether or not... But no, it has nothing to do with Brexit. No, no, I get go. Je comprends, je comprends. But, <laughs> but it has happened. That's all. It's just, it's just, it's not cause and effect. It's not correlation. But he said this would happen, and it has. It's not linked to Brexit, of course, because it's an old political issue. But I'm wondering whether the notion of the French taking one for the team, to coin a phrase that I can't translate into French very easily, <laughs> bullet. No, the French are taking one for the team, and we're no longer in the team. That, that's all I can think of. I'm not for a minute suggesting that that's the beginning and the end of the conversation. Oh three, Christine, merci beaucoup. Oh, 0345 6060973 is the number you need. If you can make any more sense of this, then perhaps I have managed to do so far. And not for the first time, I'm slightly in awe of your knowledge levels, if you like, compared to my own. Here, this is from Quabima. Uh, France signed the treaty, talking about the original Le Touquet Treaty, as a way forward to close the Songat official detention centre and remove a so-called magnet for migrants trying to enter the UK. Uh, it was decent shelter from which to launch nightly attempts to breach the UK border. It is in the interest of France to have a smooth running port and a border for trade and tourism and not to have to deal with the people trying to break in. It is clearly more difficult to get into the UK with the UK border authorities on French soil, but not so difficult that people have given up. That was the hope. So our first answer to the question, and it's, it's by no means infallible, but it's better than anything I've come up with. Um, that the first answer to the question, why did the French sign this in the first place, is that it, 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 they thought it would solve the problem, and in fact it didn't solve the problem. Uh, you remember Songat, of course. Um, and, and the conclusion is, the problem is, there's no better solution for either France or the UK. <sighs> so, that's the mystery here. The French government have repeatedly made it clear that, that removing the juxtaposed controls would not be in the interests of France. But we're living in an era, of course, where factual analysis doesn't work in the face, particularly when linked to immigration and refugee-related issues. Factual analysis gets thrown out the window at the first opportunity. So the politician who stands up and says, yeah, we're going to stick it to the Brits by doing X, Y, and Z, is going to get cheered to the rafters. And Sarkozy, who signed the Lutuke Treaty himself, I think, is now leading the sort of right-wing political call for it to be, if not torn up, then radically revised. So, I know this is a bit turgid, but it's fascinating, isn't it, that we know so little about it, despite the fact that it's on our front pages almost daily. 0345 973 Why did the French sign it in the first place? And just, just if you can, turn your telescope around and look at it through the other end. If it was British, territory, British land that had been turned into the so-called jungle, and a politician stood up and said, well, we're going to sort of turn it into more of a French problem, we would, as a nation, be cheering that politician to the rafters, wouldn't we? Wouldn't we? I've got two phone lines free. If you want to grab one, be quick. Stephen's in Cardiff. Stephen, what would you like to say? Good morning, James. Uh, I've read a lot on this, but I'm still none the wiser. It's, isn't that um, fascinating in and of itself? Uh, yeah. Your front page is every day, and yet none of us really know anything about it. Mm. <laughs> well, I think I, I think I'm fairly sort of bright and sort of uh, can <laughs> grasp things. But, but, but from what I'm what I'm ga gathering, yes. on a sort of ad hoc sort of reading, um, is that 
it's about money and apart from the trade and tourism to ease that the French side that there was 60 million euros paid by the UK government and another 15.4 million euros so it's so we, we ha have been paying for it but, yes. but it is you know whichever way you look at it and regardless of whether they're refugees or legal or illegal it is a French problem because they are, whether we like it or not, in France. They are in France. But but but, but but it's the French decision to keep them there. Well, no, it's not, um, James. In my view, because it, the people, the people that are there, Sangat or any of the and Calais, they're not. Everybody's free to go in or leave. They don't have to stay there. Precisely, and the only reason they don't leave to come to Britain is because we've got border guards in France. Exactly. So, so now if, if France say you're not welcome here anymore, they're all they're all in Dover by tea time. Well, how do you, how do they get to Dover? Because the French customs are not that interested in who's leaving the country. Security issues, immigration issues are determined by who's coming in. Have you ever tried to get on a t uh, on a on, on a Eurostar, James? Uh, I have. Yes, I have tried to get on a Eurostar, passport. but but the, the the you do have to show your passport. Of course you do. But if you're coming back on a ferry, you generally get waved through by the French. It may well be that they're only waving you through you because yeah, they know you, that the James, British... You can't get on a ferry without showing a pass. You yes, just to, to the you British just... border guards. Absolutely. To the, James, when you go to an airline, when you go to, when you go into uh, Charles de Gaulle to get on a plane, the first uh, passport you give to is the airline. Yes, to the, to uh, this is the point, in. though, isn't it? So the British border guards, if they weren't allowed to operate in France... You would. The, the proposal is that you'd have a, a, a hot spot there where everyone can apply for asylum in Britain, in France. They can't do that at the moment. So you can't get on a Eurostar, James. You, you just can't um, with with without showing a passport. No, no, you, I know, I know I you can't. This is. I think we're adding to the confusion. Let's try and bring a bit of clarity to it. The proposal is not that um, everybody would suddenly pile into Britain, but those hoping to claim asylum in the UK would be able to do so in France. If they failed, then they could be deported directly to their country of origin. But the problem would become more of a British one than a French one. That's the proposal. I don't see how it becomes a British problem, though, James. But I just can't see it because, you know, if if if, if I'm travelling to the to Britain from from Spain or, or from Italy or from, I have to show my passport uh, to to get on the mode of transport. Uh, and if you're coming to the UK, whether you're coming, no, I, I, I think I can help. I think I get it now. I, I do, because you, you know these people can't show their passports anywhere because they want exactly. to claim they want to claim exactly. asylum in Britain, which is which is why the jungle exists. The French are looking to get rid of the jungle, so they're saying, okay then, rather than us having to have this terrible logjam, if you will, of humanity at, at our border, of people trying to get in across your border, they have to apply for asylum here via the British, they can apply for asylum in Britain, in France. Yeah, but at the moment, James, we, we are paying for it. If we stop paying, they still have the problem. They, they can't move it. They, and, they, and what they can't do is change international law to say that asylum has to be... So, you know, no, why can't they? Why, why, can't, why can't they actually that's, just... That's international No, law. no, I, I, you mean the Dublin Agreement. I understand that. But that, that, why can't they... And this is what I would do if I was the French person, if I was the French politician. I would literally say, well, off you go. Let them deal with you in Dover. That's how things used to be when we were young, Stephen. It's only a relative. Get, my point is, that, James, you won't get to Dover unless, unless, unless you swim the channel or hide in somebody's boot or try. But that's what that's what's happening at the moment. The French are seeking to check. The French are seeking to change that, and the way they plan to change it is by what introducing hotspots in france where you apply for asylum there um why that is such a problem for britain i don't fully understand and and of course you're right at the moment you can't hop across on the on the on the channel on the train but i do think it's fair to say when you're coming by boat you don't generally get much grief from the french officers the point at which you have to prove that you're traveling honestly and with the right papers is when you hit the british customs post go back to when we were children and that customs post was in dover what would happen if it was moved to dover again I just don't know. I mean, I'm sort of thinking out loud. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Do you know, Stephen? Just just finally, in the first instance, why did they sign the two K? Um, I have no idea, but uh, but I think it it, it it was for trade and tourism because they were having a problem there, and they had some money offered and uh, a sort of solution. they couldn't do it on their own, so they accepted the money, and then it turned into a problem. Yeah, that's not an answer at all, is it?
Oh, no, it wasn't James. No, it's Phillips. not a criticism. I, I just, just, I, I'm feeling fellowship in my own ignorance. Why, why the heck the French signed it in the first place? They thought it would solve the song gap problem. It's created arguably an even bigger problem. If you were a French politician, you would say to voters, well, we're going we're gonna to make life harder for the Brits on this one because at the moment the French are doing all the suffering. 0345 606 Seven, three. Gordon says the solution is to make the UK less attractive than France. Simples. Well, only Gordon. I don't know how firmly inserted into your cheek your tongue might be. Many would argue that we're, we're cracking on with that job at the moment uh, at a right old pace, making Britain a considerably less attractive place to live than it used to be. Um, but uh, also, of course, the language becomes relevant and the, and the uh, keenness, if you like, the enthusiasm to hook up with family or friends. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Alan's in fleet. Alan, why did they sign the treaty in the first place uh, no idea i mean is this a point where we really all should cease having the conversation until we've swatted up well possibly i think the issue will be but this is never going to happen this is posturing by the right-wing french politicians james there is no way in hell they can totally just step away from a treaty they've signed if they did that any negotiation with any French politician, any French government in the future with any other country in the world would be on totally different oh, No, no, don't no say one. that. Otherwise, the fact that we voted to leave the European Union means no one's ever going to trust us again. I mean, you can always no break treaties. No, but if you do it, there's a level of trust loss that you, ha as a country, as a politician, have to accept. Now, these French politicians are making out they're going to do this, do that, so they're going to make France great again, they're doing it all for the French people. If they are then viewed on an international stage as untrustworthy... It doesn't matter, though, because all their treaties are conducted under the European Union. It's a 500 million people trading bloc. The, the, the French individual bilateral treaties will never yeah. be involved in trade. It's illegal. But, but the point is, if you have, if it sets a tone, it sets a view, if you are trading on... It's not a tone, mate. Trade. Listen, France can do all the deals it wants with the rest of the world because it's a member of the European Union. Bilateral treaties about borders, that would affect Britain and Belgium. Yes, but the point is... Well, stop saying but. I mean, you're just trust wrong. To the level of their trust. No, I don't, you, it doesn't matter about trust because all of their important financial treaties will be EU trade deals, not French trade deals. It's illegal for the French to conduct any... Do you know I mean? What is it you don't understand about that? I just think French politicians would not want to be viewed as untrustworthy on a world stage. Yeah, OK. I, well, then I'll just repeat to you again. The trade deals that would be in any way affected by this lack of trust are conducted by the European Union, not the French. So... Uh, make of that what you will, but the border, bilateral border treaties, <laughs> it's not a question of trust, is it? The Brits want it, the French don't. I don't understand why the French signed it in the first place, nor do you, nor does anyone. Uh, apart from this notion that it would somehow solve a problem that, that it failed to solve. 03456060973 is the number you need. And, and with the greatest of respect to Alan, and indeed to, to, to other callers, and I suppose to me as well, it, doesn't it say everything about where we are now as a nation? That we've all got really strong views about this and no one's got a flipping clue what the facts of the issue actually are. It's quite incredible. I'm trying to make some sense of one of the hottest political potatoes of our times, a French proposal to end UK border checks in Calais. Home Secretary Amber Rudd has uh, passionately rejected the proposal, but she doesn't really have the power to do so, I don't think. Um, and in terms of this Le Touquet Treaty that Britain signed, I think we need to add the tunnel. It was when the tunnel was opened, wasn't it? Songat and the Channel Tunnel conspired to create circumstances in which the French thought that signing Le Touquet would be pretty. But like any treaty, there'll be a clause in it that says if either signatory changes their mind, they're welcome to withdraw. I apologise for chuckling, but apparently that's not obvious. Uh, 10.34 is the time. You will be aware by now, of course, of the passing of the American actor Gene Wilder. You may not be aware. Um, he's died at the age of 83. It was confirmed overnight. One of the funniest men ever to appear on Celluloid, The Producers, Blazing Saddles, Young Frankenstein, various other films as well, of course. You may not be aware that he, he, he cut his acting chops in this country. He attended the Bristol Old Vic Theatre School in, oh, off the top of my head, I presume the 1950s. I, I didn't know that. Um, Jenny Stevens presumably did. She's the artistic director at the Bristol Old Vic. I, I, I sort of, obviously, before your time, Jenny, unless you've got one of the longest shifts in the history of, of theatre. Yeah, well, yeah, well, well before my time. <laughs> he, left here, he left in 1954. Six, right. um, having d so so sixty years ago, isn't it? it is. um, and the theatre school was actually only ten years old at the time. Um,
Um, we're about to have our 70th uh, birthday now, but uh, yeah, so he was one of the relatively wow. early. Do we know how he ended up there? Do we, do we know how he ended up there? He 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 came over. It wasn't unusual to have a, a sprinkling of um, of students from uh, from Canada, from America, uh, at the school at the time. Um, and he'd I think he'd been in Milwaukee. I think he'd been um, a student there and came to do a, a sort of post grad, if you like. Um, or, or I'm not quite sure how old he was. We, we could probably do the maths and work it out, couldn't we? Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm not quite sure why he ended up here uh, and he, as i say he did the one year course but i don't think he even completed it oh I think that, so he um, wasn't a model he, student then well this I, this, there must be someone there someone in the in the wings who, who remembers him well i tell you what there is there isn't anybody actually in the wings but there's our old head of acting courses was a guy called john hartock and he was taught by a man called rudy shelley who was a you know a great doyen of, of drama training wow. back in the day and he so john knows about gene through rudy um uh, and what what he said apparently what rudy said about about gene was that he always had ants in his pants um he was constantly animated he, he, he did say it was fairly impossible to teach because rudy i think was quite systematic quite precise about things but there was something um m much more animated really about gene wilder um Yes. Although uh, uh, at the time it was called Jerry Silberman oh, when he it? when he was here, yeah, yeah, um, and he but he always had a real twinkle, and he took to the he really took to the physical side of the course. He loved the physicality, and you can see that uh, through in his performances. And he particularly embraced the sort of stage combat. And apparently, when we went back to the states, it was it was quite big at all of, of that. The fencing. Um, I, 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 did, did yeah. I learned this. It's amazing what you learn about people when they die, isn't it? Sometimes he was he, he was at Bristol that he sort of became a fencing enthusiast. He did, he did, and it was all the, 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 the physical side, the combat side. We're still quite big on our combat, actually, but um, but we, we he let, apparently um, he, he felt he wasn't getting enough sort of Stanislavski and um, tradition, see. which is a very deep naturalism, but actually, you know, we do, we do stand the man now, I've got to say. Um, uh, Where does he stand with... with did, a, did you give us a quick heads up on some of your other alumni? Because, I mean, he, he's a Hollywood royalty here, but I know Bristol is one of the most prestigious schools in the, in the world, actually, not just the country oh yeah yeah no well we're, we're right proud of um the stephanie cole stephanie cole you know uh, uh, daniel day lewis is probably one of the one of our biggest alumni uh brian blessed pete possles where ian lavender olivia coleman um and if you want to go more recently who sort of like more my time really say marseille left here who is the lead in love nina mm. uh, and has been in fresh meat and all the rest of it laura carmichael who's lady edith in downton abbey um, a very, so, very good um, school. I tell you what, you must have got your Stanislavski sorted by the time Daniel Day-Lewis got there. It's yeah, hard to think yeah, of an actor more, more more method than him, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's it, that's it. No, Daniel Day-Lewis is, uh, is, is, is well method, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd love talking <laughs> to you, Jenny. We'll do it again. Hopefully not when one of your alumnus has passed. We'll find a slightly more upbeat reason to do so. That marking the uh, death on Sunday in Stamford, Connecticut, due to complications with his out with Alzheimer's disease of the US actor Gene Wilder. I didn't know that. My apologies. Previously, of course, known as Jerry Silverman. From, from an era when, I guess, trying to camouflage or disguise a Jewish surname might have been professionally advantageous. I don't know. 10.39 is the time. 03456060973 is the number that you need. Um, my favourite texter today is uh, Brian in Rotherham, who unintentionally proves quite a lot of the points I'm trying to make politely, but I, you, politeness is pretty thin, mate, doesn't it, when you come up against this, Bri? Couldn't give a toss about facts and figures, pal. We don't want that bunch criminal jihadi terrorist on our shores, simple as, what bit of my text don't you understand? Well, I'll answer your question, Brian. The bit I don't understand is, is how you think that the French proposal could be resisted by the Brits. I mean, you're probably entitled not to want these people on our shores, but the French are putting forward a proposal that makes it more likely to happen. That's, unfortunately, what happens when you look at facts and figures. <laughs> Nicholas is in Norfolk. Well, that's a bit broad. Whereabouts in Norfolk? In Wyndham. 
Wyndham, spelled wine yeah, yeah. Carry on. Nicholas, what would you like to say? Can we, can, can we, can we, hang on, can we adjust our records? I, I, I want Norfolk to be properly recognised. It's a great big land mass. So right, Wyndham, W-Y-M-O-N-D-H-A-M. Thank you very much. Carry on, Nicholas. Gene Wilder, Gene, Gene Wilder fantastic. It's very sad. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think you're right about the French um, have the right to send the, the asylum seekers into England, but they have a problem which is much more political than even that. At the moment, I was in Provence a couple of weeks ago, they are shutting their borders at a place called Ventimiglia, which you probably know quite well. And they no, are. I don't. At all. Why, why do you say it like that? Why, why would I know? Oh, it quite that's well? the border. I don't know. You've probably driven through there, haven't you? It's from the, the Riviera. I, I never, I never really get. Any, I don't get any further than the Burnham Market. I was in, I was in, I was in Wales next to sea yesterday, mate. Just up the road from lovely, you. Lovely. I'm not going to Provence. Lovely, lovely, Too rich lovely. for my blood. Yeah, go on. Um, the, uh, and there's a migrant camp being set up in Ventimiglia. In fact, the, uh, the Milan's mayor warned that the city is going to set up a, a, a tent city in Milan to house migrants who have been rejected from French and Swiss borders at the present time. So this is much. This is more of an internal French political problem because well, it's a, it's a European that, problem. But, but that exa well, exactly that, exactly that. But I mean, the point is the French are rejecting migrants from Italy and and, and sending them back. In fact, they've got the army up on the Alps catching migrants who are trying to flee around the border and over the mountains. So, uh, and that part of France is particularly right wing. I think they have a, a Front National mayor in Toulon. Um, so, one of the things they're probably doing here is that the French right wing are trying to actually uh, play a bit of a game and turn attention on Calais, whilst the rest of the world, or particularly Britain, although I'm now telling you this, doesn't look at the problem they're now creating in Ventimiglia and Milan. They now have containers. I think it's complicated. Ventimiglia. It's complicated enough it complicated. without you bringing a Norfolk flavoured conspiracy theory into And they've spelt Wyndham. They've spelt Wyndham wrong as well. I knew they would. It's spelt Y Mondham. It's got. It's, it it's a lovely little Norfolk. Eccentricity that the mond is, is silent. The mond is silent. It's wind and I'm like, that. Stay, stay steady on me. I want one, 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 one strange little nomenclature tradition <laughs> at, at a time. Um, I'm going to leave your Provence problem in the fridge because I can't bring yeah. myself to address it until we've understood a little bit better the Le Touquet issue. I now understand why the French signed it. What I can't understand is why on earth they wouldn't do what they're threatening to do. Have you got an answer to that? Simply, they could do it, yeah. but of course they would they would then implicate themselves in Italy and Switzerland for the same on the same. Yeah. So what they're trying to do, as you quite rightly, is no, but no, they wouldn't because they can turn European people problem. away. They can turn people away from their border with Italy or Switzerland. That doesn't well, we compromise do their that doesn't compromise their strength for saying, well, look, uh, uh, Britain. We can do the same thing, though. Can't yeah, we? exactly. We can just, they can arrive in Ca we, well, they can arrive in Dover. Yeah, we can just put them back on the boat and send it back. Yes, exactly. Well, but, but that that's becomes a massive, doing. a much bigger. That. That's a much bigger nightmare nightmare for us than what currently happens. Well, that, it's a nightmare for the Italians at the moment, because the French are rejecting asylum seekers at Ventimiglia, at the border control. Oh, I, I, this is why I wanted response. you to, that's why I wanted you to park the Provence observation, because if you, if, let's just well, take what... Relevant, isn't it? Well, it's no, relevant not, not to the question I'm asking, well, because what I'm I asking... Amber Rudd will bring uh, it up, Amber Rudd will bring it up in her discussions with Casado, won't he? Yeah, I, well, she? We'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I think it, at the moment, I think it's unlikely she's going to focus, because the, the European Union ha now deals with its own border problems. We're now mm. going to be separate from that equation, and, well, and, and under your, anyway, Nicholas, Stop talking just for one second. Under your analysis, as you said, yeah. what's to yeah. stop them sticking everybody on boats, they get to Britain and then they get turned away? That's a much, much bigger, to, to use a colloquial mm. phrase, that's a much bigger shag for us than what currently happens. Well, we'll just send them back. I mean, that's what, that's what yeah, the French as are as opposed to, media. As opposed to never never having to deal with them at all, which is what happens at the minute. I, 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 I know it wasn't sense Amelia that you kept saying, but I don't know why it popped into my head. 10.44 is the time. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC, and so far, 45 minutes in, completely baffled as to why the French... Well, I don't know why they signed it in the first place. It was because the tunnel changed the nature of a border. It does, actually. We forget that. It's not a sea border. There's a tunnel. I know the tunnel goes under the sea, but it's it's land at the bottom of the tunnel. It's a fact you can walk, if you will, as one fella did, didn't he? So why on earth wouldn't they seek to shift this problem a little bit more into the British court? I, I honestly can't imagine what answer there will be to that. Why wouldn't they? If the boot was on the other foot and this was all happening in Dover and we had any power whatsoever to push the problem back across the channel, 
We just would, wouldn't we? Now, especially in the current climate of sort of jingoism and, and, and xenophobia, we would know, let them deal with it. We're going to be fine all on our own. And I'm not sure we've solved any problems, but how pleasant it is to have a conversation about European borders, migrant crises, and indeed the so-called jungle in Calais that is pursuing truth rather than just yet more reasons to be hateful and hate-filled. 0345 606 is the number you need. Question's pretty straightforward, actually. Why on earth wouldn't the French do what they're threatening to do? What, what, what possible interest, French interest, is served by keeping the so-called Calais jungle in place? Um, and it would be a disaster, even if we did find ourselves in the position of having to turn thousands of people straight back as soon as they got to Dover. Who would pay for that? And not only who would pay for the processes of scrutinizing or, or the, the relevant papers, an asylum application is received, you can possibly argue that it, it should be ignored or they should be sent straight back. It would be legally quite difficult. But who's going to pay for it? Why a friend? Why, why would France not do what they're threatening to do is the thing that's got me puzzled. 03456060973. Tony's in Poplar. Tony, what's going on? I see somebody's told you that um, this problem started a long time before the last couple of years when Angela Merkel threw the borders open to anybody. That it wants it to come. started. The Latouke Treaty w w was signed well, when the Channel Tunnel was opened. Well, no, it wasn't. It was signed after that. Originally in 1991, you had the Sangat Treaty, which set up the uh, agreement for uh, juxtaposed border controls. Yes, that's the phrase. Then it followed into the 2K, which was still talking about the Channel Tunnel. So, so it evolved. Sorry, sorry, you. sorry, sorry, sorry. In 2003, there was a further agreement which put border controls on Channel Tunnel, channel tunnel stations. Then the 2K thing applied it to cross-channel ferries. Right. Ah, got you. So yes, 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 yes. So the Latuke expanded okay. from, from, from the channel to the ferry. You're quite right. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's why that's, that's, that's why the French would do such a thing in the first place. Yes. And it hasn't worked. They did it for reasons that haven't appeared. Well, no, they did it for, for, for very good reasons at the time. Yes. Okay, you're talking about 20 odd years ago. Sure. Before all the troubles that they've got with the open borders happened in the last five years or so. Oh. Okay. But Songa and, and the jungle were in existence years and years ago. The jungle was in existence years and years ago. It People were being turned away under the Songa Treaty. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Not, wasn't not it? extended it now. Oh, no. well, no. I mean, there might be more people in it than there were. It goes up and down. But the, no, prob the problem yeah, yeah. the problem of this, this log jam of humanity is, is not new. It That's was, not... It was a small log jam at the time. A small log jam. Okay. A couple of thousand a year. A couple of thousand a year. Look up the numbers and you'll see that I'm no, right. I, don't, I sense you think you're having an argument with me. You're not. We're, we're all here to try and learn. So, in, in, in answer so to the next question, so, well, why anyway, would... That's why I started. Why wouldn't the French. Yeah, okay. I agree with you. I do agree with you. Right. I, I don't know what you're agreeing this, this with. Is a bilateral, I'm, I agree that it's a bilateral treaty. Yeah. That the French have the ability to walk away from the treaty if they want to. Yes. Why wouldn't they? Because if they walk away from it, then they walk away from all of it. It's the same reason that we don't just walk away from the blasted EU. Right. Okay? No. They walk away no. from all of it. That I don't, shuts down. Tony, I, I, it's, I'm sure it's my fault. I, I, I really am. But, but there's, it is your fault. Yeah, yeah, they well, walk the, away. There we go, Tony, mate. I, th I think you need to have another cup of tea, mate. Benoit, a French name, I presume, is in Hackney Wick. And speaking of French names, I should just clarify a point made by a previous caller. The mayor of Le Touquet is not Front National. There are plenty of Front National mayors in place, but someone did ask me to point that out. Benoit, what would you like to say? Uh, hello, yeah, not the mayor from Lille is not, definitely not from from uh, national from right. she's republican though sure. yeah um the problem is not a french problem and i think the reason why the government the french government doesn't want to push that it's because the french government is not saying that that's what they want to do holland has explicitly said that they were not going to do anything to that treaty it yes. comes from the republican head of the region the north region who he's pushing this xavier bertrand because xavier bertrand who yes. if you remember last year was elected against Marine Le Pen. She was running for that region seat as well. So that region is administrated by only right wing and extreme right wing in the region. So that is the kind of um, context. Elector. Yes. Context. And this context follows as well 16, 17 years of um, 
uh, not jungle because some cat wasn't called a jungle. The jungle is really a sort of a key word that has erupted for the last few years. But in 1991, I think when Sangat started until 2002, when it was closed, under pressure from the British government, I believe, and the Red Cross as well, yes. then the treaty, the Tukia Treaty, has came into place as a consolidation of the agreement between the UK and France. And I think both parts were quite happy to have uh, access to border control on each territories because they have some trade interest and perhaps as well they were already starting to believe that they needed to be working hand in hand uh, against threats or terrorism etc etc so that is a context i think and closing um the jungles or revoking the treaty of 2k which clearly is impossible uh is definitely not in the interest of france because it's not a french problem it's a European problem, I think. So this is, this is oh, oddly, we're looking at it through the lens of sort of fact-free British rhetoric. It's actually fact-free French rhetoric that we're talking about here. It's a right-wing mayor trying to tack ever so slightly to the left of, or not to the left of Marine Le Pen, but trying to, trying to win electoral battles with Marine Le Pen by absolutely, making the noises that the electorate absolutely. want to hear. Why, why is it unworkable? Why is, why is it from a French perspective, why is it unworkable? I'm glad you were here today, Benoit. I was beginning to despair. Why, why, yeah. <laughs> why, why is it unworkable from a French perspective to to revoke this treaty yes because um, if you think about it there's about six seven thousand uh, asylum seekers waiting at the border being controlled regularly on everyday basis trying to cross illegally the border um, if you revoke this treaty then perhaps Dover or Folkestone is going to become as well a new center for to welcome those asylum seeker yes right now those asylum seekers, not every one of them are going to go through the net of UK custom. We're okay with that, I think. Sure. Some of them will be sent back. The one deemed undesirable, right? The one that are not fit to go through the UK border system. So where are they going to go? They're going to come back to Canada and they're going to try again. So if you re-legislate and create a new sort of treaty, then the people who can't come through anyway, who haven't been able to come through for the last 20 years, are they going to stop? Are they going to go away? No, they're going to stay here. And I think the jungle will stay in France and will start erupting in England as well. So, it's from, from, from I, 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 I mean, from a French right wing pr perspective. I could sell oh, the idea yeah. of a jungle being in Dover if, if, if I could sell it to the electorate as even not removing but simply reducing the problem in on French soil. I, I mean, it's you do, yeah. I mean, it's probably the, it's probably the, I can tell you there if I was a French right wing politician saying that the jungle is going to disappear, I can easily probably with all my rhetoric and my media access sell you the same idea as. The money that I'm sending to Brussels will then now uh, being sent to the NHS. Yes. 350 million. Well, the, yes, exactly that. So if, if you're prepared to lie way. and appeal to people's yeah. worst instincts, yeah. you could pull this Absolutely. off. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think this is quite a scam thing. It's a bit of a scam, to be honest, and it comes in a particular uh, difficult time. When well, hang on. I, I, is coming up. Yes, but I'm just going to quote you, Mr. Sarkozy, who of course seeks to be president. And, and I'll do it in English if you don't yeah. mind. He says, I'm demanding the opening of a centre in Britain to deal with asylum seekers in Britain so that Britain can do the work that concerns them. I know, yeah, exactly. And the thing is, when the treaty was uh, signed, I think in 2002 or 2003... As the 2003, yes. Yeah, some, so, well, the close, Sangat closed in 2002 and then they signed the treaty, didn't they? Um, it was a case of... I think there is something about when the asylum seeker make a, make a, uh, a claim before the ship leaves the port, then it's a French administrative problem. Yes. If the claim is being made while the asylum seeker is on the ship or arriving in Dover, then it's an English problem to deal with it. Now, I, I, I think, I I think hang on, we're going to run out of time and I want to pick your brains a yeah. little more because I understand most of what you've told me. I don't yeah. understand what you're... Are you accusing Sarkozy of uh, uh, sloganeering that he'd got no real intention of making Britain deal with these asylum seekers? He's just saying no, it... No, What? It, well, he's got no intention. The problem is that he's probably not going to be even the candidate that goes through the primary. He's not the most popular one you should be is probably the one that will be the candidate for the Republican Party but, and... But if he did win, if he... Well, the thing I don't understand, and I th I'm probably going to have to hang up my headphones, not still not understanding, the thing I don't... Let's imagine Sarkozy won. Let's imagine he tore up the Le Touquet agreement with all the ramifications that involves. Right. 
what is to, what is to stop progress on his proposal? Well, so that you do end up with a, it, it, with the French effectively waving people through their own customs, not having a customs border in France anymore. So all of these people arrive in Britain to be dealt with here. However, we deal with them remains to be mm -hmm. determined. But why, why are you so confident that couldn't happen? I don't, I, I don't think the uh, government and next year government would be probably still Theresa May's government will let this happen. Why and not? Then, why, why not, though? Then, I mean, if Sarko as I said, imagine Sarkozy wins because this is such an attractive proposal. Just imagine. Why, why would it not happen? What's to stop it from happening? The, the, the political forces in the UK could... Uh, obviously be stopping this, I suppose. Well, we don't have any I say over what happens in France. The political forces in the UK can't no, tell No, you, you, you can't. It's true. It's true. You can't. But the problem is, I think, as it is, as I said, it's not a French problem. You can't just reopen those borders like this. No, well, I I mean, un unless you are, I, I hesitate to remind everybody listening of this, unless you are a, a particularly populist right-wing politician who has successfully persuaded vast swathes of the population that facts and figures don't matter, only feelings, and uh, also that foreigners are our enemies rather than our friends. So if I was a right-wing French politician, I'd be fully signed up for this. And there's not a great deal we can do about it.